Here's your host, Alex Garrett. I, you know, I always like to bring on filmmakers and creatives, and my next guest, Michael Emery, uh, Michael Emery Films, is no exception. But you know, I don't know, Mike, if people know that bald eagles live in New York City, yet here you are along the Hudson River for capturing them. First of all, tell us who you are. Introduce yourself, because I'm just meeting you for the first time as well. So tell us who you are and what kind of films you do make. So my name is Michael Emery. I live uh, near outside of Albany, New York, and... One of my passions, well, I've always done video production for a career, but one of my passions uh, that I started in 2013 was filming bald eagles. Um, In 2013, that was the first time I've ever seen a bald eagle, and uh, ever since that day, I've been kind of hooked. And uh, and I've just been going back, I've been learning more, and I've been getting better and better footage. So now what I do is I, I take all those and I make little short stories and video clips uh, of bald eagles, uh, mostly in New York State, but uh, all around the East Coast, and that's kind of what I do for for fun and for my passion. Where are they normally found? Because I know we talk about Pigeon Forge, we talk about other places that aren't New York. So, would you consider it a surprise for some New Yorkers to hear that they reside in our own state? Absolutely. So that, that's what got me started. So I was actually surprised too. So I was at a uh, a place near Albany, and it has a big waterfall. And when I was there, they had one of those signs that, you know, give you information about the waterfall. And they had a picture of a bald eagle on there. And it said bald eagles are seen here. And I was like, well, I had no idea there was even bald eagles in New York State. So that actually the same day I saw two eagles uh, that I got on film. And so that's when I started doing research. And uh, bald eagles weren't in the late 70s. There was only one pair uh, of eagles left. So there. Oh. Have you ever were, filmed have you ever gotten to see Challenger at all? I've got to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. So they, uh, uh, so they were on the brink of being almost extinct in uh, mm. New York State. So because they were, um, they were being poisoned basically by uh, pesticides for, from farmers, and they couldn't reproduce. So what they did was they they banned that substance, and then they brought in uh, eagles from Alaska, and then they released oh. them in uh, New York State, and so now. Uh, so we went from in the 70s to having like about one pair in the whole state to now there's, I think, probably over 500. Uh, I ask you this. Um, we see them as this gracious, graceful, soaring animal representing our nation, right? They are a national bird, bald eagle. But in your experience, I feel like they get down and dirty and messy to get their prey, do they not? Yes. So I think one thing uh, people will be surprised about, about bald eagles, is that they're, they can be scavengers. They can be... Um, they're thieves, number one, too. So they, they go for the easiest meal. So if that's the only fish from a, a duck or from a seagull or especially another eagle, that's usually their first main uh, main reason is to get food the easiest possible way. That also means they'll find, you know, dead uh, dead deer in during the winter, um, whatever they can get their hands on. I mean, they, they like fish. That's their main source of food, and they prefer that. But um, especially during winter, they're going to take whatever they can get, basically. In your research, how did they become the national bird? I'm, I'm curious to know if you, you researched that. Um, I don't know uh, the exact story behind it. I know that I've heard that there was uh, Benjamin Franklin, I think, wanted the turkey to be the national symbol. Sure. Um, I think because he, he said that the bald eagles are, are thieves, which they are. Um, I think it's just when people see them, it's just they the, when they fly, the power and the grace and the beauty that they represent, I think um, – just looking at one that makes you want to represent you, represent our country. Sure. I, I don't think many people give credit to the sanctuaries that hold these beautiful birds. I mean, the fact that Challenger is able to do these fly-ins from center field to Yankee Stadium or across midfield. I mean, yep. that's a, a big credit to the sanctuaries. Have you ever visited one out of your curiosity? Um, no, I haven't been to a sanctuary, but I have uh, I've filmed eagles who have been who are injured, who have been rehabbed and released back into the wild, which is kind of similar to a lot of, you know, I think Challenger might have a similar story. Um, so there's a lot of places um, that will take in these eagles that are injured and they'll rehab them and they'll put them back out into the wild, mm. which is really crazy because, um, like I said, at one point they were almost gone. And now it's to the point where it's like you see them in cities, which is really cool. It just, you know, blows a lot of people's minds. They have no idea. And I think there's a lot more around cities than people even realize. 
Uh, I see you're wearing Lake Placid. So I know you're up in the Schenectady, Albany area. I've got to ask, um, Lake Placid is such a beautiful place. Have you seen them up there at all? Um, I've seen a handful of them, but actually uh, the most of them that I see are actually in urban areas right around Albany. So like there's one pair of eagles that they like a telephone pole is one of their favorite places <laughs> to hang out. There's one, another one that was right in, within a mile of that same pair who had a nest on a telephone pole. So, um, there, I think because there's a lot more of them, they're spreading out to a lot, you know, more areas in the state. And so that means, um, not just places like that. It doesn't have to be in the middle of nowhere for eagles. This, you know, they go, they're going wherever they can find food now, basically. Well, and that's why you see them in the Hudson River as well. Um, the uh, there's just so much I got to ask you because it's it's a novelty, and and I'm glad that you got into this. The rehab, though, I mean, people don't really realize how dangerous it could be for bald eagles. So tell us about that portion as well. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of, even though they're probably the top predator uh, on the food chain, they do have a lot of, it's not easy for them to survive. So I think the, the number one um, thing that they have to worry about is actually other eagles. Um, mm-hmm. So we had a pair here in, uh, in Troy, and they're, uh, so one of the, the female had a, a band on her foot. So a band is when they were either born or when they were injured, they put a band on them to, get to the mark their sex, the age, and so you kind of identify that eagle. Sure. That eagle was actually killed by another intruding eagle and took over oh. the pair. So um, I think eagles is probably there. That's one of their main uh, threats. A lot of times they get injured that way. It's eagle fights. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, human factors are always. Have you filmed a, an eagle fight? Yeah, I mean, um, not to not to the death like that, but uh, yeah, there's little times where they'll go and they'll walk tails and they'll spin each other around or they'll chase each other out or you know knock each other down, especially on the ice and stuff. They like to do that. Um, they're they're pretty. They're very they're very aggressive. So I've got to ask you because you've had you have this YouTube channel at Michael Emery Films and you yep. took this amazing shot of a bald eagle, which I shared on my own profile because I'm like, whoa. And so has Nat Geo reached out to you? Have you gotten these? Any requests to film for them? So I um, last last year I filmed a little bit for uh, Smithsonian Channel. They're doing actually a, uh, a TV show about the Hudson River, which is going to be really cool. So I got to film footage of that of bald eagles, and then I filmed a little bit of footage for uh, PBS did a uh, show about osprey, which is another raptor and eagle footage that I shot for that too. So um, I have done a couple things like that. A couple things are they friendly? So I imagine. Some of these eagles might have gotten to know you. Did they ever fly around you? Did you ever get to touch one in your filming ventures? Or So generally, eagles don't like people. They're very skittish. Um, eagles that live in cities are a lot more tolerant of, of people, but you sure. can't walk up to one and it's going to fly away. They really don't like people. Um, you can get um, – if then if the further out you go, the further away from the city, you can't even get close to one, one sound, and it spooks them. They get spooked pretty easy by people, and they are uh, – they're afraid. And they're so them. fierce, you wouldn't think that's the case, right? They look so, like, strong and – Oh, yeah. And, you know, bold, really. That's how they look. And damage to you if they wanted to, really, because they're – I mean, think about their, their talent is like the size of your fist, right? And they're sharp talents, so – I mean, they, Well, you know they, the gloves that these guys have to wear. It's I unbelievable. Know. All right. Um when you do post these, because the image struck me, I was like, whoa, look at this bald eagle in New York City. When you do post these, you get anybody saying like, God bless America, God bless the USA, hashtag America, you know, those type of comments. Yes, I do. I get that quite a bit. Um, I actually got a shot of one flying in front of a flag. Um, oh, wow. I, <laughs> yeah, the other day, American flag. So, yeah, I get that quite a bit. Um, I get a lot of people. I think most people just like the, be- I think beautiful, be- the beauty of them is what I get the most comments about. And um uh, that and their and their their gracefulness. We can't help but think that America has been damaged. So personally, every time I see an American a bald eagle looking for scene, I'm like, maybe that's a sign we're coming back as a country. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, do you ever do other raptors? Do, do you ever film besides the osprey and bald eagles? Any other that we can look at at Lemery Films? Um, I really focus mostly on bald eagles, um, mostly because I think that's my it's my favorite to film. I think they're the most interesting they have their, I think their personalities are pretty, pretty unique and uh, they're very aggressive. They're very entertaining. And I think they're just, uh, they're people love to watch them too. I think there's other raptors that are really cool, but I think bald eagles resonate with people a lot more uh, for whatever reason, whether it's 
the representation of America or just how cool they look when they're flying. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, it really resonates with people. Mike, I got to ask about the stubbornness because I feel like they look stubborn. They look like they can just go out and be stubborn. So A, do you witness that? And B, when they are making these sort of, you know, moves that like may injure them and you're like, what are you doing? Like, do you ever try and talk to them? So they're, uh, I, I think they're, they're, they're main, like they're very, I would say, I don't know if prideful is the right word or if they're, mm-hmm. it's a dominance thing. It's like whenever there's other eagles, they always have to be the top eagle. Like that's always like they're like, they always want to be show the other eagles or other animals who's boss. Like that's to me, that's their demeanor. They're very aggressive, especially when it comes to other eagles. I mean, I can't tell me how many times there'll be one eagle will be sitting in a perch and another eagle goes and just makes chase, makes them fly off it for no reason other than just because like that's their nature is like to, to be aggressive, to be the top of the food chain. They know it and they want to be the, the top eagle. So I think they're there. I think you're right. There is like a stubbornness or there's like a sure. aggressive, aggressive, I think is the best word to describe them is they're very a- aggressive. Have you ever been asked to film one of those flyovers I mentioned earlier where they fly from center field to home plate? No, I haven't, but that'd be really cool to really cool to see. Because if you remember, and you talk about spooking, I mean, the, the, the highlight I think of is Challenger landing on the back of Derek Jeter in yeah. the ALCS. And I was like, whoa. And I think it was stupid. They flew the plane and flew the bird at the same time. That was not that good mix, was it? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think uh, in Challenger's case, it's a little bit different because they're getting a little bit more used to people. And um, I think it's a, what a lot of it is. They're just not like um, if they have – especially if you're getting fed by a person that might change their behavior. Cause I've seen them in a lot of videos on Alaska. People are just handing fish to them right out of their hand, you know? So I think a lot of depends on the, their experience with people. And like I said, the further out you go in the Adirondacks, you can't even get close to them and then mm-hmm. here get a little bit closer. So I think um, obviously challenger is a little bit different. It's used to people. So that probably helps it a little bit, but yeah, it's a lot of people to fly in front of. Some people like to talk about the eaglets too. Do they not? And how, the, the male, the mom and the dad would fly and bring back to the nest. I have you captured that moment as well. Yep. Yeah. I found quite a few nests. Um, typically the, so the, the pair, the male and the female, the female is bigger than the male. And she does most of the sitting on eggs and protecting the nest. She's kind of the enforcer. And then right. the male, a lot of the, the fish and bring back food to the nest, their nesting season. Okay. If you're filming a certain bald eagle, you obviously know if they're not there anymore. So do you sort of get attached to these birds? And then when one isn't there anymore, you're like, man, where'd that go? Did it pass away? Did those questions pop up. Yeah. Um, and I've seen ones pass away. I could told you about that one pair that got um, overtaken. And then there was another um, pair that I know had a band too. And that's the only way you can really identify them is they, when they have the bands on that just didn't show up one day and it's been same spots for years. So yeah, you do get kind of get attached and you get used to them, but it's pretty funny to see how quickly they, they find a new, a new mate. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the, that's the species, right? I think that's just yep. the animal kingdom in general. Yep. Um, I feel like very rare to catch them interacting with another animal that might be their prey, but have you ever seen like, sometimes you see the snake make good with the mouse. You know, have you ever seen something surprising like that? Um, last week, actually, I saw um, an eagle was chasing a cormorant. I don't know if you know what a cormorant is, but it's like a, it's a duck it's kind of like a duck that grabs fish underwater and it was chasing it and it could have easily grabbed it out of the air and the cormorant landed on the ice and it was just staring at the eagle was just hovering over him and he was yelling at the eagle and it looked like the eagle was just going to snag him up and after about five minutes it just landed they both landed next to each other and looked and it was like like nothing ever happened and and then they both flew away (laughs) Did you Sometimes. get any video of that? Or? I did get a video of that, yes. That's sick. I got to check out Mike Lemery Films on YouTube. That's your YouTube page as well. Yep. Um, back to the symbolism, because as I said, um, you might have touched on this earlier, but why exactly does it have such an impact on us when we see it? I mean, we just, there's such a symbol that the bald eagle stands for. And are you proud to carry that symbol on your page first? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's what struck me about it is like, I think, I think it's one of those things you can't even like, I don't know. It, it's just until you see it. Um, and I think with a, a video, I think the nice thing about that is you can really zoom, you can see more than your eye can see. So you can zoom in, you can see in slow motion and you can see um, like just how cool they are and how big, I mean, think about their wingspan is like, I was going to ask you about that. Tell us about that for a minute. Yeah. It's about seven, eight feet, which is, you know, that's 
bigger than my arm length, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Just about that size and how 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 quick and how powerful they and they fly through the air. I think it's just something that um, you just can't almost can't even describe until you see it. You're just like that looks. I like the way that looks. The way that you know, with the way like the way that makes you feel. Sure. And how does it make you feel personally? I mean, you're doing this professionally, but I've got to imagine it's at a personal level too. Yeah, it's like well, it's like I always like um, I like watching fighter jets do it to me they remind me of like a fighter jet the way they come in and it's the one thing i really like is the the respect they command from all the other animals so mm -hmm. for example um if you ever see a group of seagulls right and a lot of times they'll all be especially i know it's more in the winter you see them all laying on the ground they're kind of just resting and all of a sudden they all would fly up in the air wow and 99 percent of the time it's because an eagle is flying through because they're scared of it and same thing with ducks. Anytime an eagle goes through a group of ducks, they all take off because they're, they're scared of it. So I, I don't know. It's something about the, the respect and the power that they have that they can they can just change the whole demeanor of, a, a, of other species, you know, because they know what it is, too. Right. Absolutely. And I, I can't imagine that. OK, you just mentioned the fighter jets. Do you film those? Do you film other? What else do you film besides these bald eagles that we can look for? Yep. So I, uh, I do film, f uh, fighter jets. There's a couple air shows in New York that I go to every year. Um, and then I also film, I work for, uh, Helderberg Land Rover Defenders and I okay. film restore, we do restore Land Rover Defenders and I film a lot of that too. So those are the well, main things. Remind me the Land Rover Defenders cause I've never really heard of them before. It's a, so it's a, it's a British car. It's a, uh, a car and, uh, these are restored from, five years old they're like off-road in kind of like uh almost like a jeep looking thing but they're like a they have a kind of a cult following and so that's one of the other things that i that i filmed quite a bit all right um this is i i wouldn't say not just a hobby because you're literally working and getting paid by smithsonian but um do you have other work that you do like is there a mainstream job that you have in addition to making time for the filmmaking so the uh the the lambert helderberg that's my main my main job okay and then, then I do the Eagles when I get time, basically. Um, so usually on weekends, I usually, um, um, like I said, it's, it's more, that's more of the Eagles. It's more of like what I do for, like I find that for fun. Sure. Um, so The dro drones have changed cinematography forever. And how have they changed for you shooting these Eagles? Do you use drones to shoot these Eagles? So I don't use them to shoot with the Eagles because um, there is, because the eagle, the bald eagle is a protected animal. So there is actually quite a few oh, yeah. groups they have. Um, I mean, it's this was all based off when they were almost extinct, right? So things have changed obviously quite a bit, but there is still, you don't want to harass it. You don't want to get too close to it, especially during yeah. a nest. So drones, I use them I use them for uh, to help tell the story to show an area, but I'll never fly up to an eagle or around eagles. Cause I guess I'll be stupid also because it would probably eat that thing alive. You know what I mean? Right, for sure, yeah. And that's a a hundred thousand you know thousands of dollars of equipment right there so you don't want that to happen exactly um you mentioned the male versus female but i want to hone in on that for a minute protectiveness i always think the female in the animal kingdom is more protective than the male and maybe you see that in person as well yes so there's been times where i've seen um because the male is smaller first of all where another eagle will come in and it's a younger eagle and younger eagles don't have a white they don't get their white head until they turn five so they can have okay. a brown head and so you know you can know you know when it's not sexually mature yet so they turn when they turn five they, they, that's when they can actually become uh, reproduce huh. i've seen is that times, like balding i hate to say it but is that like an eagle's balding or something like that at five kind of, kind of like it has to earn its stripes you know so it has to get its, its tail and it's gotcha. had slowly turned white so each year you can kind of tell what how old it is based on okay. how much ever had so um but uh i've seen it where you younger eagles which you'd think would be scared of the adults but if it's a female it could be one year old it could be and they can dominate a male old a male because of the size they just have quite a bit of size and i've seen times where the male was trying to um, scare off an intruder and he just could he couldn't do it and then the female came the female. in and, yeah so yeah they're, they're definitely the enforcers very interesting yeah i feel like that's the case for any mm -hmm. any species that you know yep um that's very interesting. So at the end of life, right? I mean, have you ever, have you ever seen them die naturally? What does it look like? Cause you just said, you know how old they are. So mm -hmm. is just their head completely white by the time they pass away? Or is there still that yellow beak 
you know, that we're all used to seeing. So when they turn five, that's when they get their a full adult. After that, you can't tell how old they are. So when they're five, their head will turn completely white, the tail will turn white, and they'll have no their feather, their wings will be brown, mm. and then uh, their beak will be completely um, yellow, and their eyes change colors too. But once wow. they turn that age, it's the same until they die. Wow. All right, I'm going to ask you a million dollar question here because I'm sure there's going to be some bald eagle enthusiasts listening to this. Yeah. Um, where can we find them in New York City? Because I know you've shot down here. Yep. Where did you find them? So there, I saw them um, just outside uh, in New Jersey. Okay. And then, I've seen them out near the Meadowlands. I've seen them right by uh, uh, MetLife Stadium. I've seen them right out there. So they, they anywhere they can find you, you got to think about an eagle. They need to have usually they're finding by big bodies of water. So they need to find fish, right? So places where it's not, it can't be too populated or there's a ton of people or else they're never going to go there. So it has to be kind of a little off the beaten path a little bit. So places like the Meadowlands and uh, like the Hackensack River over there, I've seen them over there. Um, I did get a shot of one uh, a young eagle find in front of the um, Empire State Building in the background one. So is, uh, I've got to ask you this because I feel that everybody talk about climate change with the, ecosystems now is there a change to the patterns of these eagles and based on the climate i mean is there a change that you've noticed uh it's hard to say because um well winter time is usually one of the best times to see bald eagles because so water you know fish being their main source of food when it water freezes especially further north or like up here most of the rivers are frozen they go to they all congregate to the open water oh yeah and they can get their talons on that ice pretty good can't they yeah, right. So that all brings them together down to the, um, and that's why they go down. That's where I've seen them down by New York City. It was only in the winter time because they all work their way to the open water. Um, so, uh, with that being said, I feel like over the last couple of years, it seems like there's been a lot less ice, except for oh. this year's ice. It seems like there's been a lot less ice than the typical winters, but then you have this winter and there's been a lot of ice. So it's kind of hard to say. Um, but that does definitely affects their behavior because they'll, they'll, they won't work their way down. They, they migrate as far as they have to, to find food basically. So, so they won't be heading to Florida anytime soon is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. No, that's interesting. So basically you, you're not seeing them head South like normal birds would during the winter. And I feel like a lot of birds are staying up here now because it's a little warmer than it usually is. Yeah. I mean, it depends. It really depends on the winter. It seems like every year it's a little bit different, but, um, and this year it was, I feel like it got, it stayed warmer a lot longer. Um, mm. but then the last couple of weeks it's been really cold and I've seen, uh, quite a few groups of eagles together and a lot of ice on the river. So, it, it, but that ice is a really big factor to where they go in during the winter time. What's the most daredevil photos, videos you've taken and, and angles you've taken, I guess it's my question. I think the, the, the hardest part is uh, the cold, dealing with the cold, because you have to stay out there for quite a while, because the majority of the time they're kind of just doing nothing. So to get the good shot, you really have to wait. So I think it's the temperature with the wind. If there's a wind and it's like, you know, it's already like negative five degrees, that is usually the most difficult one. Mm-hmm. Cause air has a hard time with that, too. And then just trying to stay warm because you got to stay still, too. So the, that's usually the most difficult part is uh, when it's cold. All right. Um, hours of footage. I can't imagine how many hours you've got. Uh, knowing now that you've stayed out there for a long time, how many hours yeah. did you get? Or do you get? Uh, I have no idea. I can't even count it probably how many hours it is. And it, it really depends on the um, on, on the day. Some days you can go out there two days in a row and get, I mean, you can shoot and you know you got nothing. So um, it's a lot of hours to answer your question. It's definitely a lot of hours and majority of it, just a lot of hours just waiting for something to happen um, or that. And so a lot of it's just like, um, cause you got to think a majority of the time they're, they're resting. Right. So if it's, yeah. you know, there's only so many hours in a day, they're only going to be only going to be active for a few of those hours. And that's usually early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Are you, um, are you, have you been into this whole, science and bylaw and ecosystem since you were a kid i feel like it takes a certain kind of interest to get into this uh as deep as you got um not really honestly i'm i'm more of a like a like a filmmaker i've always done videos and filmmaker kind of side and i think that um i was never really i didn't even like i said i didn't even know anything about eagles or anything um 
I was looking for something cool to film to do stories on. And then I found the Eagle and it kind of, that's what got my interest into it. So I think it's more of a recent thing for me, but I've gone in like full hundred percent. So I could see. All right. The screech. I feel like some of yep. these movies can be made or made, made or broken by the screech and what you get. Uh, do they screech for you? So uh, most of the time, almost, I would say nine out of 10 times the screech you hear in a movie is a red tail hawk. It's not mm. a ball. A bald eagle has actually got a kind of a wimpy sound in. It's like, it almost sounds like a seagull. It's a very high pitched sound. So I would say 90% of people would have no idea what be, a bald eagle sounds like. And the movies usually use the red tail hawk, which sounds way cooler in my opinion, but uh, it's, it's more of a, it's like a high pitch, almost like a seagull kind of sound to it that you would never expect to have it. Mentioned the rehabilitation centers earlier. Would you consider partnering with them and say, Hey, I've got this Eagle that looks not well, come and check it out. Have you been able to do any rescues for these? Um, No, I haven't yet. There was one time I thought there was an Eagle that was injured. It couldn't fly. Um, Mm. I opened out. It was, it was, it was less than a year old because it had a brown head and it just learned to fly, but I knew it could fly because I've seen it fly a couple of days before and it was just laying on this rock and it couldn't even lift its head up. And so I call, actually called one of the places and I told them, I think this eagle is injured and it can't fly. And then they said that, well, just give it a little bit of time because um, what eagles do is when they eat and they eat a lot, they actually store food in a part of the neck. It's called the crop. Okay. And so what they do is that they, almost kind of gorge themselves with the food but what happens is it weighs them down so what the the reason why the eagle wasn't lifting its head up the reason why it wasn't flying is because it had food stuck in its oh it was just it digest basically and of course a little guy like that i'm sure you're just eating anything you can because it's a baby right so great and then the, the night before i got a shot of the uh parents bringing in a duck a full duck so i think it had a, i think it ate the duck Probably. and it much and basically that's what it, it just ate too much and it couldn't fly <laughs> but after a couple hours it was fine night versus day i feel like there's a big difference and does the lighting scare the eagles off when you try and film them at night so at night i've never filmed them at, at night um because they're a daytime predator because they're okay. all like the vision is their main that's their main like weapon i would say if they can see but they need but they're not nocturnal so at nighttime okay. they're, yeah, they'll be at their at their nest they're at their perch or wherever they're at um until the next day so um no not i haven't got any nighttime footage interesting well i guess the only nighttime footage of eagles you can get is at lincoln financial with the actual philadelphia eagles right <laughs> anyway uh that being said mike lemory films thanks so much for spending time with us and i want to have you back when can we look at this smithsonian uh, presentation and will it be on tv or online so it um i don't think they have a release date yet but it's uh it's gonna be on the smithsonian T- uh, tv channel it's gonna be on tv um i'm not sure i think it'll be sometime this year but and it's, it's about the hudson river are you competing with others for this footage or does it do you kind of have a niche up there um there's quite a few people that actually that do photography and stuff similar to to what i do um not a lot of people do video as much video as i do which is i think kind of my niche but um okay. there's people a lot more people every um, every every year, I feel like I'm getting more into it, and I think a lot of that has to do with the technology. Um, it used to be, you know, to get a long lens because you need a very long zoom to be able to reach them because you can't get very close to them. It used to be so unaffordable, really, and the cameras have come such a long way, and the price has come down. I think it's got a lot of other people into it. All right, uh, one last thing: photography mm-hmm. of these birds, of these bald eagles, what you do versus video. What's the technique difference? I guess. Um, so with photography, it's, you're looking for that one frame, right? That one, that one moment. And whereas video, I think it's telling more of telling the whole story, right? So photography, you're looking for that one frame that tells a story, but video, it could be a series of shots. It could be a day full of shots, right? To tell like a film. So I think to me, that's the biggest difference is you're not just looking for that one moment. You're looking for a series of moments um, to make, to make one story. And your technique wise, would you say the technique is very different or kind of similar? It's 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 actually quite a bit different because um, I use a lot of times I'll do just hold the camera for photography, but video I use a tripod because you really have to keep it sure. 
then you have to worry about audio and um, then there's frame rates and all that stuff. So I think it's the basics are similar and you're in the same places. It's just a little bit of different technique and different um, settings and stuff on your camera that you have to worry about. Well, you know, I started the show was Fly Like an Eagle. Well, I think Mike Lemery is flying with the eagle. So <laughs> check him out at Mike Lemery Films and come back and join us again. I'd love to have you back. Well, I appreciate it, Alex. It's been a lot of fun. I'm Alex Garrett on Alex Garrett Podcasting, where we're always adapting.